Welcome and thank you so much for having me here at the Center for Spiritual Living Bakersfield on this beautiful morning. I am honored to be asked to speak today. And I was told that your theme for this month is being open to possibilities and that the topic for this week is living in the question, a high idea. And I wanna share with you that when I heard the topic, I did a little happy dance and a smile because living in the question is one of my more favorite ways to live. I purposely go through life with as little planning as possible because I believe that leaves open doors of possibilities. See, if I plan too much, I'm kind of closing all those doors. So I was pleased to hear about the topic. And the idea of this topic comes from the practice of visioning. And there's a question in the visioning practice that asks, what is spirit's highest vision for me in my life? And so I wanted to introduce visioning a little bit in case you are not familiar with it. And if you are familiar with it, this will just be a little review. Visioning is, first of all, different from visualization. Visioning comes from divine mind, from our connection with that mind or that source or that God. Visualization is when we create an image in our headspace. So visioning comes from something much greater than visualization. You might say that if we vision first, then we can visualize. So visioning for me, is both principle and practice. It is principle it is in that it isn't something we always just do. It's something we be. We be open. We be aware. We be affirmative. In other words, we cultivate a sense of beingness where we are always open to the still small voice within, where we are always aware of it where we say yes to the things it is prodding us to do. But visioning is also practice because there's definitely a formula for visioning and there's definitely a thing that we can do in order to vision. The difference between practices and principle is that with practice, we sit down and we actually do something. With principle, we make what it is we do in the practice part of our daily lives. So there is a formula to visioning, and I'm just going to briefly relay the formula to you. And basically, with visioning, you can do it by yourself. You can lead a visioning, or you can have a visioning be led for you. Here's the formula. You get something to write with and on, and then you sit quietly and meditate a bit, focusing on your connection with spirit. And then you ask yourselves the following questions. What is God's or spirit's vision? Highest vision for me in my life. And I'll repeat that. What is spirit's highest vision for me in my life? That's the question we're concerning ourselves with today. But there's other questions in visioning. Visioning asks, what must I release in order for this vision to manifest? And I do mention release a little later in my talk as well. What must I embrace in order for this vision to manifest? And is there anything else to know at this time? You can find visioning most likely on a Center for Spiritual Living website. And I'll repeat the questions for you and we also have a visioning department in home office at Centers for Spiritual Living. But here's the questions again. What is spirit's highest vision for me in my life? What must I release in order for this vision to manifest? What must I embrace in order for this vision to manifest? And is there anything else to know at this time? So that's the formula. And today we're gonna to concentrate on that first question, what is spirit's highest vision for me in my life? And I love this question because it is a place where both, where I can use visioning as both principle and practice and it comes in really handy. And again, you know, I can do spiritual practice till the cows come home. 
But if I don't internalize what I'm doing and make it a part of me and be it, I'm not really getting the full benefit of the practice. I can meditate every day and that's nice. But if I get out of my meditation and proceed to walk through my days without a sense of mindfulness and focus on the current present moment, it doesn't do me much good. I can read a daily meditation and feel good for a few minutes while and during I'm during the time I'm reading it. But if I carry my takeaway from the message with me the entire day, I begin to own the takeaway. If I carry the focus that I cultivated in meditation with me all day long, then I begin to actually train my mind and I'm much more efficient and relaxed on my days. Visioning is the same way. We can do visioning and that's really nice stuff. But if we take the principles of it with us 24 seven, we begin to be it. So the principles of visioning are connection with God and being open-minded. So I can carry those principles with me. And when I do that, I begin to sense, cultivate and nurture a sense of connectedness with a God of my understanding. And I can begin to cultivate and nurture that open-mindedness that allows me to be open to possibilities. And from that sense of connectedness, I always get a nice, warm, yummy feeling that I'm never alone. I also get faith from that sense of connectedness, that kind of faith that allows me to live comfortably in the question and comfortably in the place of being open to possibilities. So there's a lot of good stuff that comes from that place of connection. And from that place of connection and from that place of faith, because I know that God is all good all the time, I can also know on some level that whatever is happening for me in my life is good because I know that the universe is always conspiring for my good. Ernest Holmes teaches us that. And even if what's happening doesn't necessarily look or feel good in the moment, I can always have that knowing. And then from there, I'm opening up to new possibilities. Now, this takes a little getting used to, to living in the principle of being open to possibilities. Not over planning, in my world anyway, allows me to do that and be that. I drive my detail-oriented friends crazy because they're all into the details. And I'm like, well, let's not be so detailed about it. There's a balance there. I admit it. There's a balance there. Living in the question allows for things to incur, occur in my life that I never would have intellectually considered. And I'll give you an example. I would not be here speaking to you today as an ordained Center for Spiritual Living minister unless I was open to living in the question, unless I was open to the possibilities. I never in my wildest dreams considered being a minister. I was just fine being a practitioner. Thank you very much. And I was just fine in my chosen career. I owned and operated a photography studio that was extraordinarily successful for many, many, many years. So I thought this being a minister thing, in spite of the fact that I kept getting messages from within and with, from outside of me over and over and over again. But the messages kept coming and pretty soon they started coming in forms that at the time did not quite seem so pleasant. The recession happened. The photography industry changed. My business went down the tubes. And I complained and complained and complained. I did not release with love. I released with claw marks. I complained about the state of the industry at the whole I complained about my competitors. I complained about the recession. I complained about everything. I was so busy complaining that I 
couldn't hear the messages I was getting from the multiple sources I was receiving them from to go to ministerial school. I created such a sense of loss in myself with all that complaining that when I finally did come around to going to ministerial school because I really had no other choice, I blocked some doors to me. I blocked some possibilities. I shut them down. So we release with love and in doing so, we allow the possibilities to occur in much greater ways. Now it turns out that because the universe is always conspiring for my whole, my, my good, that that possibility never gave up. It was always there. There's a book called the art of uncertainty by Dennis Merritt Jones. And if you're, even at all curious about this, this art of living in uncertainty, about cultivating a sense in you of being open to the possibilities, I recommend this book. Again, it's called The Art of Uncertainty by Dennis Merritt Jones. Here's what he has to say. Change happens depending on your perspective, which will be determined by the level of your consciousness and your sense of unity with life or separate, separateness from life, that's either the good news or the bad news. Uncertainty and change go hand in hand. Whether you like it or not, change happens when it is ready to. It is an inevitable and necessary part of your experience on this planet. And with change often comes the uncertainty of when it will happen and where it will take you. There is great wisdom in the saying, this too shall pass. It confirms that you can and should expect change and uncertainty as a natural part of your life experience because nothing and no thing lasts forever. And so we get to be open to change. We get to accept it. And we get to Create the void that allows for the possibility to happen by releasing with love whatever wants to be released. We have to release the old in order to embrace the new. And that lead, you know, that's those questions in that visioning process. What must I release in order for this to happen? And what must I embrace in order for this to happen? I will share with you that it wasn't until I was able to completely and totally release with love and gratitude that old career that things be, began to open up in my new one. So visioning, and be, visioning begins and ends with a connection with God and faith and then listening to God's answers for us. And we also have a job to do. We get to release with love, not with claw marks all over it. We get to try and hear those messages sooner rather than later and acknowledge them. We get to do our healing work around whatever it is that got released or changed. If we don't do the healing work, we're closing the doors of possibilities. Somewhere in that process and in all the changes in life, I realized that living in uncertainty was an excellent way to be open to possibilities, which is why today I purposely plan only as much as is absolutely required of me and no further so that I can be open to the possibilities. Today, I know what is mine to do in ministry. I know what is not mine to do in ministry. And much of that is due to the process of visioning. And I'm enjoying ministry thoroughly. So whatever it is that's going on in your life, visioning applies to it. It applies across the board in all situations. We could be having a health issue and sit down and vision and ask, what is spirit's highest vision for me in this health issue. We could be having a, um, contemplating a decision 
a biggie, you know, one of those big life decisions, such as whether to move or whether to start a new relationship or end an old one. Visioning helps in all of that. So we vision, we do the visioning, we become the visioning, the principle of it. We be open to possibilities. We're willing to live in the question at when necessary. And we release with love whatever is blocking us from our possibilities. In this way, visioning allows us to live ever more successful lives. And I love this quote by Ernest Holmes. He says, there is a power in the universe that honors our faith in it. There's a law in the universe which exacts the other most farthing. We all wish to feel that the power behind everything is good as well as creative an eternal and changeless intelligence in which man lives and moves and has his being. Intuitively, we sense that every man in his native state is some part or manifestation of this eternal principle. And that the entire problem of limitation and evil and suffering and uncertainty is not God ordained, but the result of ignorance. It has been written that the truth shall make us free, provided we know the truth. And we note that the evolution of man's consciousness brings with it the acquisition of new powers and higher possibilities. So when we vision, we know our connectedness with God. We know we are one with God. And from that connection, from that oneness, we experience an evolution of our own consciousness and thus acquire new powers to be able to discern the answers for the rest of those questions in the visioning process and be open to higher possibilities. And so let us pray. I acknowledge joyfully and completely that there is one power, one source, one force, one God in this universe. And I joyfully acknowledge and accept that this God lives and moves and works and has its being in and as and through me. That God and I are completely and totally one. No place where God begins and I end. No place where I begin and God ends. We are one inseparable unit. And so I speak my word now for absolute glorious connection, for a knowingness that I am one with God always. 24-7. And I speak my word now for a knowingness that in this oneness and in this connectedness, I have an unshakable faith that allows me to know the highest vision for my life and allows me to move in the direction of that highest vision. I speak my word knowing that I release now anything which is keeping me from expressing and being and living in that highest vision. And I speak my word now for completely embracing anything that keeps me from honoring that highest vision. I embrace it all. And I speak my word for knowing and being open to complete and total possibilities. And I gratefully release this word and anchor with those wonderful words we love to use. And so it is. And I thank you very much for allowing me to be here today. Thank you. <laughs>